Good morning and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ilona. I am also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online coach, a personal trainer, a bodybuilder and I'm also a recovered bulimic. Now we are here today because I've decided that I'm going to start following um, Amy's life journey and life by Jen's uh, weight loss challenge they've put to each other. So what I've done is I've taken a couple of clips from their initial videos that they put out earlier, earlier this week or at the end of last month. And uh, I'm going to react to some of the things that they have to say on it. And then moving forward, I will probably do reacts to them. So this is not like a raw react um, because obviously I have seen the clips because I've, I've cut them and I've edited them. Um, I don't know how long their vlogs are. These are quite new people to me. I don't really know too much about them. I've just heard a few reaction channels mention them. I have no opinion about them whatsoever. I have nothing to say from what I've seen so far of these videos that I'm looking gonna look at in a second is that Jen seems to be a very nice, very soft-spoken lady. I think uh, Amy seems a little bit more sassy. That's all I know so far. Um, I don't think many people cover them. Um, I just want to say as well, like I do generally hope they are successful in their journeys. And also as a personal trainer and online coach, if either of them are interested, I am more than happy to help them out. Um, just drop me a DM or an email and I'm more than happy to look at, see what you're doing with your nutrition and provide you any recommendations. Um, I don't expect anything in return from it. I really just want you to do well. So I hope that's like a, an indicator of that there is a goodwill here. I tend to just react, if you're new to me, I tend to be quite factual with my reactions. Um, I'm not so much, so you'll see, you'll see when, when we go into this, like I have an, I tend to look at it more from a, a perspective of facts, of science, of nutrition, etc. But you'll see, um, if you're new to my channel, you'll see, and if you're not new, you kind of know what I'm about anyway. So let me just enlarge this here and let's get into this reaction i'll link their videos that i'm reacting to in the description below should you want to watch them if you go ahead um, i've clipped bits from other videos so don't expect the full one and also i do intend to film a follow-up fairly soon after this because i'll kind of want to stay on top of it um, I'm not going to probably react to every single video but I've seen I've scanned through a couple of other videos and there I do want to react to them and also this video is one and a half times speed so yeah I'm going to shut the fuck up now let's get into it who came here for that this is going to be my dedicated channel for my weight loss journey getting back on track because as you guys have known this is starting my second year on YouTube it will be my second year in a few months and the weight loss has not happened um, I'm very disappointed in that I'm disappointed in myself and I had hoped to actually this time be successful at losing weight and it just didn't happen. The only long-term success, and it wasn't that long-term, but the most success that I've seen during my vlogging time, my YouTube career, has been when I've done keto. So she says that her only success that she's had so far and that she's managed to sustain, this is Jim, by the way, is when she did keto. So anybody that has seen any of my videos, I'm, I... I do bodybuilding shows and whenever I diet for a show, I do keto. I'm very much a low carb person anyway. It's not necessarily something I advocate uh, to just anybody. I think there is a time and a place for low carb diets. Um, I think when you're obese, you probably don't need a lot of carbohydrates because carbohydrates, the only purpose they serve is energy. So, you know, when you're not moving a lot, you don't need a lot of energy. I think carbohydrates are more appropriate for people that are that have very fast metabolisms or people that train at very high intensity or that are just naturally quite slender. So I am naturally not slender. I have to, I'm, I live in a caloric deficit and I still manage to gain body fat. I'm not saying that I am fat. I just say that it's very easy for me to gain body fat. I gain muscle easily too. So I have to be very mindful with my carbohydrate intake. I like eating low carb anyway. I rather fry things in butter. I rather eat cheese, etc. Um, that's not good keto only. I mean, when I say eat cheese, I do mean in moderation. I mean like a slice of cheese. I don't mean like jumping on like a literal block of cheese. Um, my my I tend to get a lot of my fats from uh, things like nuts, seeds, um, animal animal products, etc. If she does keto and if we're going to see her recipes or her cooking or whatever, whatever, I'll be able to identify very rapidly whether or not she's doing keto right or wrong. But if it works for her, great. Um, 
I have no problems with that. I don't think it is for everybody, but if it works for you, then definitely stick to it. Um, just don't see keto as like a diet. You should see it. I mean, everything you eat is a diet in essence, but see keto is more of a way of eating, right? So some people prefer eating high carb. Some people prefer eating vegetarian. Some people prefer eating paleo. So see keto in that region. Don't see any of these things as diets, as in like weight loss um, tools. I mean, you might lose some weight in keto, but don't think that you can just eat but, uh, bacon that's been smothered in butter and not gain weight. Because at the end of the day, as long as your calories that you're consuming are more than the calories that you're burning, you're going to get fat. It's literally as simple as that. Whether you do it keto, whether you do it high carb, whether you do it paleo, whether you do it vegan, it doesn't matter. Anyway. So that's what I'll be going back to as of January the 1st. So this is the last week of December. This is the last week of 2019. And a lot of you guys have been asking why I've been waiting to release this video, if I was going to talk about the weight loss. And I am. I planned on it the whole time, beginning in January. And I know that that's kind of the cliche pitfall that a lot of people make waiting till January 1st. Um, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys. There's no other way to say it or no excuses. I just didn't want to bother with watching what I eat over the holidays. I know that's bad. I know that my health is at risk. I completely know all those things. I was just in a mind state of I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I don't care about anything. To be fair, I get that. Um, at the end, of, like, you know, she, at least she acknowledges that she should have probably addressed it sooner. At the same time... It is difficult to diet at Christmas, like in around that Christmas period, there, there's always food, there's always things to do, you go out and about, there's, you're just, it is difficult to like try and be strict with dieting, so if you're not ready at that time, don't commit to something if you're not ready to do it, you know, it's one of those things, so if she didn't feel ready, then I think that's fine, as long as she's ready to commit to it now, then good for her, at least she's willing to make a change, and accept that she needs to change, and Hopefully it's going to work for her. Anything else? Um, so that's why I haven't talked about the weight loss because there has been no weight loss. In fact, we all know that I've gained some weight, which I'll talk about in a minute about the weigh-ins. They will be happening. Um, so what I plan to do and what my announcement is that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I am going back to, like I said, keto. And then starting January 1st, I'm going to be doing a collab with Amy from Amy's Life Journey. And I will leave her link in the description below. So in case... Um, so... I'm just going to tell you, Amy has already talked about this. She's been talking about it for a while, and I decided to hold back on my end of talking about it until it was closer to the time because I didn't want to hype it up too much because I didn't want to talk about keep talking about nothing that I wasn't showing you guys. Um, so now that it's pretty close to starting, I'm going to tell you what's going on and what we're going to be doing. So Amy and I have decided that we want to take our weight loss seriously. Um, I know I want to do that, and I know Amy does as well. Um, I just don't feel good about the place I'm in. I've regained a lot of weight. I don't feel comfortable in my body anymore. I was starting to, when I was on keto, I was starting to feel more comfortable. I was starting to be able to walk and move more freely. And I had more energy, a ton more energy. And now I'm just back to being sluggish all the time and my willingness to walk and move is diminishing. And I have... So I think that is probably something that goes really hand in hand. Um, I think the second that you eat bad, the good thing with keto is, is um, especially when you're overweight, the good thing with it in general is is that you're eating high fat and the thing with fats are fats are denser in calories and they don't really spike your insulin levels as much so you don't really get the energy spikes and then the massive drops and when you get a drop in your insulin especially when you have a high carb and it's all sugary carbs and processed carbs what happens is it's like you need to eat again to get that high again so you're constantly in the cycle of wanting to eat come crashing wanting to eat and crashing whereas with keto because it's fats fats don't really spike the insulin levels so you kind of stay stable and also because they're more calorie dense you are um it takes it takes it takes longer for the body to digest the fats over a carbohydrate and like i say it doesn't spike your insulin so it is beneficial in that sense of feeling satiated for longer not for having cravings um you're not less you're less likely to feel hungry um it it can be hard to get into ketosis but once you're in it it's not like once you're in it it's pretty straightforward i mean i think it does work i, I don't think it works for everyone but if it works for her uh, it which she clearly seemed to have done in the past and she's acknowledging all the how she's feeling at the moment and i'm thinking that is probably just due to 
the, the food she's consuming and it's just it's just wreaking havoc on, on wreaking havoc on her um on her blood sugar levels and you know she's gaining more weight she's holding more water all of that is putting more pressure onto the body and therefore you know it all goes hand in hand is making her feel she's feeling bad because she's looking poor like she's not ha as happy as how she looked before therefore she's mentally feeling more depressed so it becomes like a vicious cycle really really good movement and i can walk um i have my my thing of walking is i have neuropathy in my feet which makes walking difficult and painful, but I can do it. And then also my weight is another thing that holds me back from walking a lot, but those things can be pushed through. And I need to have the energy to physically, the stamina to physically do those things. And by eating the way I have been eating is not allowing me to have that physical stamina and energy to do so. Um, during the last few weeks, I've been eating really crappy. And I know a lot of people were concerned that that was because Gene was here and he was bringing bad foods into the house. And I think the majority of people know that this has nothing to do with Jean being here. This has been the roller coaster that I've been on my pretty much my entire life, and I have been on my own for nine years, and I've been feeding myself for nine years. So whether he's here or not and eating with me is, you know, irrelevant because I would get the food anyhow. I had, there's a plethora of delivery services, of restaurants. There's a ways to get food. So he has no bearing on me eating bad. He's actually been my greatest influence into wanting to do better. So I don't know much who about who Jean is. Um... At the end of the day, this is her journey to do. It's it's nice if your partner is supporting and understanding, but at the same time, if they're not in their requirement to eat like shit, I mean, like it's not cool for them to eat badly when you're trying to diet, but then at the same time, you know, you are the one that needs to go through this journey. You're going to be around people all the time that eat a certain way when you're on a diet. I mean, I've been a bodybuilder. I dieted for quite literally nine months last year uh, in order to get in for um, the finals for a pro show uh, in the UK, the British finals. So I was around people that ate. I had to go to work. I sat around people eating cake and I had to choose to not eat that cake. I can't expect other people to change their whole life around because... I've made a decision to change something within my life. Obviously, your partner and stuff should be understanding. They should be supporting. But at the same time, this is the reality of having to do something that is going to be hard work. And it's only you that can do it, really. And yeah, your partner should be understanding and they should be supportive. And they probably shouldn't like bring takeaway all the time. But then again, if, he, if they now and again want to have a takeaway then or eat candies or whatever... They should be able to, and you should just be accepting of that and go like, okay, well, I'm making this choice to change my life, so I'm not going to have that. Um, the coming year is going to be very exciting with a lot of opportunities and challenges, and just I don't know what the future is going to hold, but I have so much more that I'm looking forward to doing in, life. Better, it? in the coming year. And to do those things, I need to get out of this chair for one. I need to get my health back on track. I need to, and my health getting back on track, that consists of several different things. That consists of weight loss most definitely that's up there um, because the weight loss is going to allow other things to happen. Um, I need to have treatment for my uterine cancer and that cannot happen until I lose enough weight to do so safely. Um, oh, that's quite sad to hear that she has cancer. Um, a lot of cancers are actually aggravated by, if I find a study I'll insert it, but I'm fairly certain that many cancers are aggravated by high carb, especially sugar diet. So I'm talking things, I'm talking like simple sugars. Um, so I'm not talking healthy carbohydrates, but I'm talking just shitty carbohydrates, basically. So hopefully that will, uh, hopefully she can get the help that she needs. And hopefully by doing keto, it will reduce any further inflammation or progression of the cancer. Hopefully it can either maintain or regress. Um, I don't know too much about it. I don't know much too much about her, her physical well-being in that regard. But um, those are just some initial thoughts on it. And I've also noticed since I've regained the weight and stopped eating the keto way of life, my endometriosis has been extremely painful for the last three months. I have been in the greatest amount of pain I've been in for probably six months now. It's the worst it's been in six months. And I, the only difference I can see in that is I've stopped. So I actually, um, I didn't know much about endometriosis until the other day when um, one of my clients approached me about it and they, they advised me that they have this. And one thing I can say to her that might be just beneficial in general because I'd imagine she has a lot of spinal problems and a lot of lower back problems 
is do pel pelvic floor exercises. So do things like bridges, try and train your core. I mean, I'm sure it's very difficult, but try and strengthen that pelvic floor. And that way, we'll, the, by strengthening those muscles that basically sit around the uterus, sit around in the, around the hips, um, in the lower spine and all of that, that will help the any periods you get in the future, they should be less painful because of the, you, you're keeping everything healthy and strong down there. And also if you've got lower back pains, making, making sure you get a strong core, that will also help with the support of the muscles that sit around the spine. So the erector spinae, I believe they're called. So getting your inner core strong, that will keep your spine strong um, and therefore you're probably less likely to get lower back pains. So that's just a few tips. I mean, if you can do glute bridges at home, I'm sure you can even being overweight. It's like, you don't have to even use any weight. Just lay on the floor, lift your pelvis up, squeeze your glutes and like roll down via the spine. Make sure you don't just bump up, just roll up slowly through vertebrae, vertebrae, come up, hold the squeeze and vertebrae, vertebrae, roll down. Do you like my vertebrae? Do they make sense? <laughs> I loved eating keto, I am back to eating crap, white sugars, refined sugars, and it's just really taking a toll on my body, and I don't like being in pain because then being in so much pain, I'm either resort to taking a prescription medication for pain, which is not a narcotic, but still it's a prescription medication for pain, or I'm forced to take a lot of Advil, which is not good for your liver, pancreas, those internal organs. So losing weight is going to allow several of the conditions that I, I don't know what Advil, is Advil an aspirin? If it is, I'm pretty sure that she is probably prescribed aspirin anyway because aspirin is a blood thinner and when usually when you're obese she they put you on blood thinners i'm pretty sure that like it's if i find it i'll and again i'll insert it up i'm pretty sure that having a very small amount of aspirin on a daily basis is good for most people just because like it thins your blood just a little bit um i could be wrong there it could be just maybe aimed at a certain population of people i'm not too sure but Obviously, anything, anything that's uh, medication in high amounts is something you do want to avoid. It's not good for you, especially strong medication. I have to clear up to get treated and to be able to move forward in itself. So that is my big motivation is to get my life back on track. Amy and I have decided that we're going to do a weight loss challenge. Now, the challenge is going to be a year long. It's going to run from January 1st to December 31st, 2020. So I think this is a very good idea that she's trying to do a weight loss journey with somebody else. Um, I think it's kind of your, your, you will help motivate each other. But having said that, if they're, because they're both morbidly obese, I don't know how good of a motivation they are with each other. I think it would be beneficial to have like an outstander there to help motivate them when things get tough. Because if you're both in that sort of mindset, I mean, I can... I'd, I'll try not relate it too much to myself, but it's kind of like, for example, like Pro Anna websites, right? If you have, it's very easy to uh, stimulate negative behaviors or, um, how do I put this? It's, it's very easy to condone negative behaviors by being like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, I've done it too. Like, it's only one It's only one biscuit here. And before you know it, like, it escalates. And it's very difficult to keep each other accountable because you're both doing it. Does, does that make sense? So it's good. But I do believe that they would benefit from having, like, a third party there that isn't, like, a partner. Somebody else. I'm not saying that should be me. I, or like, they probably each should have a third party that is within range should it be their doctor should it be a personal trainer a nutritionist uh, a mental health person i don't know but they should have like a third party there rather than just them them two or their partners because it's very easy to manipulate your partner and it's very easy to play off each other when things get tough but it's a good idea nonetheless and there's going to be several things that are taking place during this challenge and there's going to be many challenges within the one year challenge so let's talk about the challenge and the rules and how it's going to work this is a one year challenge, but we've decided that waiting an entire year to give away money is a little too long. It is a lot too long, actually. So we've decided to break it down into four mini challenges. Each mini challenge will last three months. Now, here's how it's gonna work. For every pound I lose, I'm gonna put a dollar in a cookie jar. And it's going to be an actual cookie jar. I was at Goodwill this morning and we were looking around and I happened to find something that I saw and it was drew my eye and I knew that I needed it for this challenge, it's specifically for this challenge, and it was a whole dollar seventy nine. So here's what I got. This is my cookie jar that I will be placing my dollar in for every pound I lose. You'll see it's empty as of now, and hopefully very soon it will no longer be empty. So I'm so excited that everything this new year is going to hold 
So basically, I think after this, she goes on to talk a little bit about what they're going to do with this money. I think they're going to give each other some money at the end of the year or at the end of every quarter. Again, I'll link the video below if you want to see that whole thing. Um, they're also going to give money to charity, which I think is a good idea. So there is like an additional incentive there um, to give back to their, to their subs, to each other and to charity. Pardon me. Uh, so yeah. I think that's good. Um, I, I quite like the idea of putting a dollar in there for every pound that they've lost. Um, I think sometimes physically seeing a weight loss or a progress is um, it is very uh, motivational. So I, I like that. And be in store for us um, as a couple, as an individual. There's a lot of growing and a lot of changing that we're going to be going through and I'm excited to do it all. I'm very motivated and I'm going to rewatch this video because I'm sure throughout the year there's going to be times that I lose my motivation where I want to give up. It's going to be hard. I know it. Um, I can talk a good game now, but when I stop eating the junk food and eat the food that I need to fuel my body, I'm going to lose that willingness occasionally and I'm going to be in bad moods and I'm going to be honest with you guys about how I feel. I plan on doing a video. The video will be out on December the 30th. I'm going to show you an honest look at what I eat in a day unhealthy wise. I think it's important for me to see as well as you guys see what is making me gain weight, what is keeping me at the current weight that I am and I still don't know what I weigh because I haven't weighed myself in a couple weeks. Um, but I want to look and see how many calories that I'm eating because I randomly eat food and I don't count the calories because sometimes I just graze on food and I forget that everything that I keep putting in my mouth has calories and they add up very quickly. So I think it is a good idea to take an honest look at what I eat. I'll be posting that. So that's a really fair point she's making. Um... You know, I do truly advocate people to, if they're trying to lose weight, that they they measure out everything or they try. The thing is, it's like when you're overweight, especially when you're morbidly obese, you can't use scale eyes and think like, oh, this is just 100 grams of chicken because your view of how much something weighs is very warped. Um, and obviously you understand how calories work but I think you're easily in denial of how much something is. Does that make sense? So one tablespoon of peanut butter can be around 300 calories, but it can be 500 calories depending on how you do your tablespoon. So what you should do is you should weigh it out because that difference, say you're trying to be healthy and you're playing around with fats and especially fats because fats are very calorie dense. So one gram of fat is equal to nine calories. So if you are just even if you're just using scale eyes for everything rather than an actual scale i mean i can scale eye a lot of things because i've been weighing out my food for about six years and i'm pretty much on the money when it comes to weight but i still have to weigh things out especially when i'm dieting because if i don't i'd, I'd i pretty much do it all the time sometimes i just estimate things but if I don't, I will gain weight very quickly because before you know it, if you're putting yourself in a caloric deficit and say it's only a few hundred calories, because that's how you should start off with. It should be very moderate, right? Um, because if you do it to excessive, you're probably more likely to binge, etc. So if you put yourself on a small calorie deficit and you're not weighing your food out, how do you know that what you're eating is exactly, say, 20 grams of protein? It could be... 25 grams of protein could be 30 grams of protein how do you know what you're eating is 10 grams of fat it could be 20 grams of fat now you're telling me a bit of butter like this or a bit of butter like this there's not that much in there but we are talking a difference of 100 calories now if you do this several times a day you are overeating several hundred calories every day so the deficit you have created you're over it before you know it so that's why it is important to actually physically weigh things out if you're trying to lose weight so that you know that you're not overeating. Um, it is annoying, it is, but it's only the only true way how you know for sure that you're going to be on the right track unless you buy everything pre-packaged. So you go to, for example, your local shop and you get a packet of chicken breast that is already 180 grams and then you just scan that in and stick it in my fitness pal or something like that. So, yeah, that's all I said about that. <laughs> I, by the way, I just had a coffee, so I might be somewhat hyper, and I do apologize. Um, I talk a lot. So, yeah, my short reacts of 10 to 15 minutes tend to be half an hour long. Welcome. On Monday, December the 30th, <laughs> and we'll all get a look at the kind of junk that I've been shoving in my body for the past few months that has kept me at this weight and has been holding me back. 
and hopefully that video will serve as a reminder to me of how dangerous compulsive overeating is and how unhealthy it is. So, although he won't be doing sh keto the way I'm going to be doing keto, he will continue to have some things that aren't on keto and I'm not going to ask him to not bring those into the house. We are not going to be bringing sweets, candy, cookies, pop, those types of things into the house. But as far as him eating his whole wheat bread or granola, those types of things, I am not going to ask him to keep out of the house because he doesn't have to have a problem. I'm not going to like bar all kinds of food that he eats. I think she's very right in saying so. Um, this is her journey. It's not their journey. He doesn't lose. He seems, he, from what I've seen, he's a, a fairly slender guy. He doesn't seem to have to lose weight. So why should she? It's gonna just put pressure on their relationship if she's gonna forbid him from doing a lot of food things because she's on a journey. As I mentioned earlier, she just needs to learn to have that willpower to be around people that are gonna eat things that she wants to eat as well. It's as simple as that. I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a dickish move if he's constantly eating, sh like, take a, like a fast food around her. I mean, it wouldn't be cool, but at the same time, she's the one that needs to lose weight. So, you know, be understanding, but at the same time, he's allowed to live his life and enjoy the things that he wants to enjoy, and she shouldn't hold that against him. He needs to eat from the house. I'm okay with not... I mean, we're both okay with not having sweets in the house because it's just not healthy for either of us. So we've agreed to that. I also got Santa brought me for Christmas a set of glass prep meal prep bowls. I'm going to be doing some meal prep videos. Santa also bought me, which I don't have here with me, a keto cookbook. So I'm excited to do some recipes from that. I also have these that I got. Santa, Santa got them for me, actually. And they are by Prep Naturals. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. So if you want to pick these up, there's five of them in the set. There's some meal prep videos coming from me on this channel. So everything weight loss related will be on this channel. So I think that's all I have to talk about. Monday will be an honest look at what I eat in a day, the unhealthy version. Then on Wednesday, I'll be posting my weigh-in, my starting weigh-in, as well as, I don't know, probably talking about something else, but it will be weight loss related and talking about this challenge again and kicking it off and getting started in the new year. And I hope you guys will stick with me and come along on this journey. So I have a lot of motivation moving into the new year, my health, my prospects of new adventures coming in the new year, as well as some other adventures and opportunities that are coming my way that I will tell you about in a later time um, but I have a lot in my life and I need to be healthy and I need to be on track and I'm still going to continue working with therapy and OA to be healthy as a whole because I don't believe that you can be healthy without incorporating emotional it's good to hear that she t is undergoing therapy I think probably somebody her size has some underlying mental problems which is why there is a, a food addiction there and um, so yeah keep that up spiritually and physically, all of those things combined to be healthy as a whole. It's going to take me a long time to be emotionally healthy. Um, my spiritual journey is going very well. I'm getting back into the will of God and being connected with my faith and my belief in God and knowing that there is a higher power that is going to take me where I need to go and show me the right things in life is very comforting as well. So I hope you guys will stick with me and come along with me. This video is getting too long, so I'm going to end it here. This is late, but this is today's weigh-in on Wednesday. January 1st, 2020, and I'm going to insert a picture here, Just or a video weigh here, and I'm going to do a side-by-side. -side. You're going to see me standing on the scale, as well as me holding the camera to see the numbers on the scale. I didn't get a really good angle of me standing on the scale this week, but I'm going to figure it out better for next week, so you can see me actually standing, my whole view standing. You see the back of me, so just don't look at my butt. I mean, that's a little comfortable, but just don't stare. Um, but I'm going to try to, but I'm going to try to figure out a better setup for next Wednesday because I want to do the split screen so you guys can see that I'm not holding on to anything. I'm not standing with one foot on the scale. I'm actually standing straight on the scale and giving you an honest number. So like I said, you'll see, I'm going to insert the clip here of me standing on the scale and then you're going to see the number on the scale and hear the number right here. January 1st, come out, 2020. It's ready. I mean, I'm not sure why she's standing on the scale with shoes. And I'm sure it doesn't, in the grand scheme, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but shoes do add on a couple of pounds. So maybe she's a little bit embarrassed of her feet I don't know it must be difficult to maintain them so I won't really hold it against her just wear the same shoes and all of your weigh-ins so that you at least have a baseline that's that's the only thing I would say 
Um, they will add a little couple of pounds and also just wear the same shoes all the time because then you're going to get a more accurate reading of your weigh-ins. 553.4 pounds. I'm just pausing. Um, she's is she really tall? She looks quite tall. Um, yeah, I mean, she carried her weight is like fairly well distributed, I think. So hopefully, when she loses weight, it should be kind of all over, and it should be quite visible for us relatively quickly. But yeah, I hope you do well, Jen. All right, there it is. So as of January first, twenty twenty. I am 553.4, which is a 42.2 pound gain since October the 24th, 2019. I am... Wow, 40 pounds gain, that's about 20 kilos since October. That's, that's a lot, but to be fair, the second she starts keto, I would imagine if she does it, if she does it properly and she's in a caloric deficit, she probably will lose about 20 pounds within a couple of weeks. A lot of water will come out just from not eating carbs and um, I mean obviously there is fat there as well but um, I'm fairly I'm fairly confident that within a couple of weeks she will lose quite a large amount of weight because obviously there is quite a lot of weight to lose so don't be surprised if her first in within the first month or so if there is going to be a massive weight drop and um, this is usually what happens on keto which is why people think it's like a short-term um, like a uh, weight loss hack it's not it's basically what it happens is that the water is just being drawn out of your glycogen cells um, and that's why you lose a lot of weight quickly but it's not weight it's water that you're dropping the weight after you've um, after you've cut out the carbs and the body becomes used to using um, uh, ketones i.e. like fat energy uh, for energy then you just start stabilizing and then you're kind of at your true weight I guess but usually there is a, a quick result initially because of the water being depleted out of the glycogen cells i was just i can't even tell you what went through my head i kind of like just blanked out when i heard that and when i actually saw the number of how much i had gained fortunately i didn't gain back everything that i lost i'm still down from last year which is good if you want to look at a silver lining or a bright side of anything at least I'm not back into the 570s where I was last year. That's a blessing. Um, I take full responsibility for this. This is completely me. I put every single drop of food in my mouth, every forkful of food in my mouth. And when I've seen what I did to myself, I am determined to not let this go on because this happened so quickly and I gain weight even I mean obviously I'm eating enough calories I'm gonna gain weight but I just gain weight very quickly and very easily anyhow so I'm not going to allow myself to keep gaining weight so that's Jen we're literally about to pretty much jump straight into Amy I have to say, like, I do think she comes across as really nice, really sweet. Um, she comes across as a somewhat scarred individual. I don't feel like she's got too much of an ego. Um, she just seems really lovely, so I do wish her all the best. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing her journey and watch it with you guys. Now, let's get into Amy. Hey, everybody. Welcome back Very to my channel. Very different energy. Welcome to my channel. Today <clears throat> is the kickoff. Again, Today sped up. is the first day of a new journey, a new life change whatever you want to call it, getting my life back together. Now, well, that's what today is. <laughs> and also today is... It's interesting because she is very, very different from uh, Jen. She, this uh, Amy is very, very upbeat, very energetic. Jen is a lot more chilled, you know. Um, it's not a, Neither of it is a positive or a negative. It's just an observation. January 1st. So I did a lot of prep prepping yesterday mentally, like, okay, you know what? We're going to do this. This is it, Amy. You know, there's no looking back. We got to do this. And... Um, I worked on my weight loss chart. I did uh, a whole bunch of words that surround it, which I will enclip a picture somewhere in here. When she said weight loss chart, I mean, I didn't watch this last night in bed when I was editing it for this morning to react to. 
I get like, this is like not me trying to be a dick. However, I was expecting something maybe along the lines of um, months or maybe like like week by week, maybe highlight in certain days where there's going to be weigh-ins, um, maybe put in some motivational pictures, motivational quotes. Um, I feel this looks... I get the idea is there. It is somewhat juvenile. Um, I guess it's better than nothing. But I think you could basically, if you if you were to see this, Amy, I think you could make this um, make this more match your personality a bit more. Um, maybe just print off just like a pl like a plain calendar, like I said, highlight the days where you're gonna weigh in. Maybe put in um, like certain goals that you want to achieve on certain days. Maybe print off, you know, like I say, like motivational pictures for people that you look up to, that you admire. Just maybe just sass it up a bit more, sass it up a bit more to match your personality. Um, and maybe make it a little bit more long term rather than just two months. I suppose two months is fairly longish term, but maybe aim for like a six months progression, you know? I don't know. Or maybe where instead of instead of where it is the the, the quotes, maybe do a picture of an a, like a holiday destination you'd like to go to. Maybe do physical pictures of your children, of your husband, rather than just names. I think maybe that will be more impactful because you can visualize it more, if that makes sense. Maybe stick some pictures of the up, uh, stick, stick some pictures up there of you at your heaviest, so you can reflect back on that and go like, oh, I, I, that's not what I want to achieve. That's not what I want to be like again. Um, yeah. Um, that will show you guys what I was doing. Um, <clears throat> anyways, so I worked on that a lot yesterday. Um, I sat down and figured out like what kind of meals that I'm wanting to make. Meals, meals, what, however you say it, I say meal. I don't know how else you say it. Meal. Anyways. <laughs> meal. I'm going to say it the way I'm comfortable saying it. Meal. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I sat down and did that. I figured out a lot of the calories so that way it's already all figured out. And then I just have to input it into the My Fitness Pal. It's back to what I was saying. So she had made a video yesterday because I had posted the What I Eat in a Day video. With okay, so I did, I did cut out a bit here because I believe she was talking about Cupcake Vegan. I don't really watch her content. Um, there's a lot of reaction channels out there. I, I, there's only a few that I watch, especially now I've started doing reacts myself. It's really difficult to keep up with everybody. Like there's only so many hours in the day. Um, one thing to say on my fitness pal is that my fitness pal is not 100% accurate. So it's very easy to find entries um, that are incorrect because it's essentially just a database that anybody can enter stuff into it. Um, so unless you have a very good understanding of foods and their macronutrient profiles, it's very easy to uh, it's very easy to input the incorrect thing. So for example, a lot of entries for chicken breast, 100 grams of chicken breast or three ounces or whatever it is in the US, I believe it says, it, a lot of them will say like 30 grams of protein, 35 grams of protein, 40 grams of protein. There's only about 20 to 22 grams of protein, depending on the quality of the chicken. So unless you truly really understand micro, macro, not micronutrients, macronutrients, um, working with my fitness pal can be tricky. And that's not saying she does, but I think for a lot of uh, overweight people that use my fitness pal, I think they probably underestimate A, how much they're eating, and B, I think they would be most inclined to go to the entry that has the lowest calories rather than looking through them all and go like, okay, I believe that this is the correct rough, like this roughly looks like the correct amount of uh, carbs, proteins, and fats for this particular food item. That's just basing it on the fact that if they truly understood the true, uh, the true values of food and they weighed it all out and they did my macros, uh, macros or calorie counting properly, they wouldn't be the way, the size that they are. It's often an underestimation of exactly how little a piece of food is in terms of calories or just choosing to opt for the least calorie, at least calorically dense option that's in there, if that makes sense. 
much I had figured out all of my calories. When I figured out my calories, I was one, not aware that there is a verified check mark next to things on my fitness pal that make up for the real counting calories. What I did, and I did this for everything that I put on my list um, that I was trying to figure out, like, okay, for instance, like the Taco Bell stuff. I googled in what are the calories in a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell. The calories that popped up, that's what I put down um, and by, for all of it. Now, when it came to like the M&Ms, the m &M bag said it was 240 calories per serving. There's two servings, so I times that by how many. That's how I got the calorie count for that. Um, again, same with like my breakfast. I mean, I didn't see this video. I don't know what she's referring to, so it's hard to say. I'm guessing that whatever... She said in that video, a Cupcake Vegan responded to and she was grossly underestimating her calories. But I don't know, and I'm not too bothered about finding out. I don't really care that much. I did the Costco buns. I googled and I did not go to my fitness pal. I did not realize you could go and look up things. So when I did that, I googled how many calories in a dinner roll from Costco warehouse. The calorie count came up. That's what I took. I times it by three. That's how I got my calorie count. So before assuming and throwing out words that you're not aware of, Please don't call me a liar. Please don't sit there and, and question if I am trying to cheat the system already. When, if I'm sitting there saying, hey, I've eaten over 3,000 calories, do you think that there's a reason why I would lie? Like, I mean, I could get it if I'm sitting there saying, oh, well, I only ate 1,200 calories the whole day. Then I would be like, hmm, hmm, okay, let's do a little bit of investigating. But do what I'm saying. So I don't think, I, like, again, I haven't seen the video. I don't know what she's referring to. I think it's probably more a constructive criticism, just like I just did in terms of, be mindful of the calories because there's a lot of entries even in my fitness pal that are going to be incorrect and it's very easy to over to underestimate the amount of calories you're eating and it's important that you are aware of exactly how many calories you are eating especially when you're trying to do a weight loss journey and if you're not doing following a plan given by a nutritionist uh, you're just kind of uh, uh, fr freestyling it yourself little or like i said all those little incorrections they all add up to be an overeating which in turn results in you not uh progressing in the goals you've set for yourself i ate over three thousand calories so either way around it why would i lie if it's over one thousand difference than the other thousand now i understand now what she was saying was you can go onto my fitness pal you put in the food and there's a verified check mark that states exactly what the calorie count is just like with the wendy's thing i did the same thing i googled how many calories that's what it came up that's what i put down i did not realize that you can go into my fitness pal you can type in wendy's junior frosty and a little check mark calorie count will come up that's the verified amount now that i know that that's what i will do so today when I woke up, um, so I'm kind of like trying to figure out how I'm supposed to upload these videos because me and Jen were both like, uh, because we're doing WW day, which is way in Wednesday. So I don't know if I should post the way, way in Wednesday today. And then next week, start weighing in on my Tuesday, but we'll go up on your guys's Wednesday. I think that's how we're going to do it. I need to discuss that with her because I'm not quite sure how we're going to do that part because we're not doing live videos. What we will do is the day before post it after. Um, <clears throat> so like today, I'm filming everything that I'm eating and my stuff that I'm doing today and that will go up tomorrow. But today I wanted to sit down. Um, I did want to show you guys what I'm weighed in at, um, give you guys just a little rundown of like what kind of where I'm at today, but you'll get to see the actual footage tomorrow if that makes sense. So today it is 3.30 in the afternoon and I just ate my first, my first meal. <laughs> um, I, that is the one thing I will say that I struggle with is when I set forth to do just like a weight loss thing or whatever, I get it so planted into my brain that I actually can make myself not hungry at all. And then I just don't eat. Um, so that's kind of what happened was it was 3.30. Well, it was about two. I'm not this, I don't know. I have literally never seen any of this woman's videos before. However, I always find it hard to believe when people that are morbidly obese say they suddenly have no appetite say that they have suddenly have no appetite or like they haven't eaten until late in the day but is that why is that though is that because you've woken up late or like your your appetite is not suddenly gonna disappear because your hung your stomach is stretched to such an amount that it's used to having such large volumes of food in there that there is no way you're not going to be hungry does that make sense o'clock when I'm like okay I need to eat something I haven't eaten nothing at all today uh to start my morning and I was busy doing other things so I just kind of kept myself preoccupied which is not it's not smart I need to not do that because obviously I'm gonna crash and then I'm gonna want to make up all my calories at one meal and that's obviously not gonna work so 
I had to run a couple things today, so I stopped off at uh, Subway since I was out, and I thought, you know what, let me see what I can get for the calories that I can find that will fit within my my frame. So I got on my fitness pal, typed in Subway, looked at their sandwiches. I found that their turkey sandwich um, and stuff was on there. I calculated, which I'm not like going into much detail about it because I filmed all that already. Um, but I, I did find the calories verified through my fitness pal. That's what I chose to get today. That's what I had for lunch, breakfast, both meals together. Um, I did not get anything to drink while I was out due to the fact that I'm not drinking soda no more and I'm not drinking any type of juices. I will drink tea, but I'm going to be finding the tea that is zero calorie. Uh, that's a big, big thing for me. But I did want to show you guys something that I did get recently. It's been a few days since I got it. So drinking tea is fine. I don't see why people would be worried about drinking tea. Just don't add sugar to it. Like any tea is fine. If anything, tea is a diuretic, so it will help you flush out some water. Um, obviously, you've got caffeine in it as well. So I'd be maybe not drinking at night. But yeah, drinking tea is fine. Just don't stick just don't stick sugar in it. Uh, but I didn't show it to you guys because I just wanted to kind of show it to you now. But my goal is to drink a gallon of water a day. Now I tried this once before and I put it into a milk jug, but I noticed that the milk jug was getting moldy at the top when Good. I was using it for the water, which is disgusting. I can't, ugh, I can't do that. So that wasn't going to work for me. So then I got on Amazon. I was just searching around trying to find something that would benefit me for like to get enough water. Yeah, you shouldn't drink from anything that's got mold on it. Um, I'm fairly certain that that can lead to all kinds of uh, physical afflictions. Don't eat or drink anything that has mold on it. And yes, I know cheese is a mold technically, and there is foods out there that are technically mold. But you get my point. If it's like green, don't eat it. And, or drink and I it. found this baby. It's my gallon, my one gallon water. It has my time sets, which this is just, you know, you could go off of that if you wanted to, but this is just to kind of help you stay on track if you need it. Also, you can hook this to your phone and you can calculate your amount of fluid from this to your phone. It's really cool. And this is an entire gallon. And... <clears throat> This thing, I've been already drinking off of it for two days now, and I can honestly say I feel such a difference because... So just on water, like, a lot of people don't drink enough water, and drinking water is actually very crucial. You have to think that literally our body is 70% water, so our cells are made out of water, our muscles are made out of water. Um, if you don't drink enough water, your body's going to ache, you're going to get headaches, your body's just not going to function as well. I personally drink around two to between, uh, two, I said two liters. I drink more than that. I drink three to four liters a day. Easy, easy. You can tell if you're dehydrated, just look at your pee. Your pee should be clear to a very light yellow. If it's dark, you're dehydrated. Drink water. Very, very important. I'm flushing myself out. So that has been a great feeling. I'm going to continue to keep pushing the water intake. And like I said, if I want tea, I can have a little bit of tea. But for the most part, I'm pushing towards just the water because I know obviously my body really needs it, especially right now, my body truly needs to just flush everything out. So anyways, um, that is pretty much what today has entitled. I, um, like I said, tomorrow will be my actual upload from today's footage. I will put it in tomorrow so you guys will see what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I will film what I eat in a day along with just whatever else I'm doing for today will be in that footage. Um, my biggest stride right now is to make sure that I am focusing on my nutrition because A, I forget to eat or I just don't eat and B, I have to keep moving but I got to find ways to do it where... I can keep up. I hope everybody is having a wonderful first day of the new year. I hope everybody had an amazing New Year's Eve. We stayed in and just cuddled one another <laughs> and I got my New Year's Eve kiss. <laughs> but anyways, all right, you guys, I'm going to close here so I can get this video up and edited and out for you guys. But stay tuned for tomorrow's video and we will get on a regimen to where we're keeping up and we're on track. I want to be, you know, posting my videos earlier in the day rather than way late in the afternoon. Apologize. Accept my apology, please. <laughs> Hello. It's ready. She seems to be significantly shorter than Jen. Um, yeah, it is concerning that there's a lot of um, fat around the belly. That is concerning for anybody, by the way, because you don't really want to have too much fat around your organs. It can lead them to fail. But yeah, hopefully she does all right. All right, so that's that done. So it looks like it didn't really make too much of a difference of me speeding up the videos and cutting them because I like to talk. I do wish them the best of luck. Um, I think from what I've seen so far, 
I feel that Amy's a bit more defensive than what Jen is. I think Jen is probably more open to criticism, to feedback. Um, Amy comes across like she is a little bit prickly. She comes across a bit more as a, a, a little bit of an Amberlynn read in terms of like, I know what works for me, that sort of feeling. I could be completely wrong. These are just my first assumptions. I do wish them both the very best of luck. As I said as well, if either of them want nutritional advice from me or any want me to review what they're doing food-wise, I am more than happy to help them out. Drop me an email, um, my my or DM me. My details are in the in the links in the in the links below. My details are linked in the description down below. On that note, I'm gonna end here. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to. If not, that is totally fine. And until next time, ciao.